Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Dr. Delgado. Then, um, if you want to remain there for just a minute, sure. because we're going to ask board members if they have any questions for staff or uh, or the parties, um, because of a time constraint. Do we have any questions of Dr. Delgado? Yes, Ms. Um, I know that the district is a uh, of 50 percent uh, African American, but Richmond itself is 50 percent Caucasian. So, what is what is the vision of of the board when they were saying there is no diversity in the application? The concern was, if you look at those addresses, it may be a little bit out of context. But um, briefly, the way that our district is demographically, the addresses that you see before you are uh, predominantly wealthy, white, upper class individuals. That's where the signatures are from. They're from the hills. Um, there are, I believe maybe there were two signatures from anywhere other than the hills. And to me, that signaled a, a lack of uh, really being committed to going down into the neighborhoods and going door to door, which is actually what the founders of Richmond College Prep had done to start their school. So, it, and actually our demographics are, are shifted somewhat. Um, I believe now we're in the neighborhood of 60 or so percent uh, Hispanic, Latino, and possibly Mm, not sure about African American and Caucasian, but our, our, our highest group is uh, Spanish speakers. You, you're talking about the district, mm -hmm. not yes. the area. Yes. But what about the area that is being served? Because I believe, um, and one of the staff correct me, but what we are, when we are talking about demographics for the charter school, what they should mimic is actually the demographics of the area being served, not the demographics of the district. So if you're saying it's sixty percent Hispanic and it, it doesn't make sense. So what so what is it that the board when they were saying that there was the lack of diversity in the plan, what was in their mind that what should the the mix be? How much of of what is what? Well if I can reframe the, the issue a little bit um, I think that locating in an area that is uh, predominantly comprised of upper and middle class Caucasians, um, if, if those are indeed your, your demographics, then go ahead and say that, but that's not what the petition says. It says that the school will locate in the area with the white upper class, upper and middle class kids. That would be El Cerrito but they are going to bring in children from other parts of our district, and that would be uh, the Richmond area. And um, contrary to, say, Richmond College Prep, again, many of the students here from that school, they're located in the Iron Triangle at present, and it, it seems to signal um, a little more I don't know, direct attachment to serving uh, the students who are in your community by being located there. And I believe that was the concerns of Mr. Ramsey. And you, uh, there is right now uh, existing schools in El Cerrito, right? Yes, there are some. And what's the demographic? Um, El Cerrito, anybody have the demographics? I think I probably have them in my bag, but I don't want to dig while you sit here. Um, I would be happy to provide them for you, and I will do that. Can I give you the demographics of El Cerrito? Oh. Um, to whom are we speaking? Um, these, oh, great. Here we go. Is that at all possible for you to see? Probably not, not if you're like me. Let me read out to you. Here we have the SARC data, uh, school accountability report card data. In Mira Vista and East Richmond Heights, that would be the 94805 area code, 22% white to 22.20% white, 25.10% African American, 0.40% Native American, 11.30% Asian, 0.40% Pacific Islander, 
two or more races, 3.60%, Hispanic, Latino, 35.30%, and we have breakdowns on socioeconomic, uh, English language learners, and students with disabilities. In the El Cerrito and Harding area, uh, we have white Caucasian at 53.30%. We have African American at 7.70%. We have Native American, 0.50. Asian, 27.30. Pacific Islander, 0.20. Two or more races, 6.50. Hispanic Latino, 11.10. Excuse me. There will be a time for public comment. Thank you. And the summit, de summit demographic, and this would be representative of all of their schools, they have 11% white, they have 20.6% African American, 11% Asian, and 5% Filipino, 49.50%, so just about half Hispanic Latino. Um, and finally, you know, returning to the issue of demographics, I have had an opportunity lately to look at uh, one of the demographics that's representative of a school population, and that would be special education. In our current charter schools in West Contra Costa, I was dismayed to find that although our overall student population is at 13% for special education, one of our charter schools is educating less than 6%. I'll say that again. While the district is undertaking 13% 13 of our demographics are students who require special education, one of our charters is doing a scant 6%, less than half. And if you wonder um, how this can factor into test scores and such, I don't, think, I don't think you need for me to tell you what effect that may have. Um, so, would you like for me to leave this handy? I'd be happy to leave it right up here on the table for you. Thank you, and, Dr. Delgado. Yes, Ms. Really, is that, yes. you have more questions? No. I have uh, just a couple of very quick ones for you. Mm -hmm. First of all, Mr. and Mrs. Chamberlain, do they have a fiduciary interest in the uh, Summit Public Schools? Well, the Chamberlains are self-described venture philanthropists. They are uh, recently relocated to our area, and not truly, but they're uh, Excuse me, ma'am. <laughs> You're out of order. If you continue to blurt out, we're going to have to ask you to leave. Sorry. Thank you, Dr. Delgado. Will you continue? Yes. Thank you. Um, yes, they are interested in supporting charter schools. They were part of the caliber application. I believe that they have uh, a fiscal interest in SPS and supporting SPS Summit Public Schools. And I believe, although I'm not certain, that they um, also support several of the other charter schools. Okay. May I also ask quickly, uh, uh, hypothetically, a student in the Iron Triangle gets on BART, how long would it take to get to this proposed charter school? It's, that's a great question. If I can, um, I'm looking for something that would help me describe this. Actually, BART does come into the Iron Triangle or near there and then heads off through um, El Cerrito. It would require probably a bus transfer after that. And the challenge that our own students have had is that e even though the district continues to provide after-school activities, clubs, and things for our students to engage in to help their social emotional growth, many of our students are not able to access these programs. For example, uh, band at Portola. It's very difficult for the students who are in, in other parts of town to stay for the band class because the last bus comes by Portola at something like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And if students are relying upon public transportation, they don't have access to many of the wonderful programs that we offer. Thank you. Mr. Gomes, question? Yes, I have a question. Uh, about the Chamberlain Foundation, mm -hmm. uh, do they own this uh, site of the former Windrush private school? I believe that they do, yes. Okay, is that site uh, earthquake 
resistance to build um, itself? That's another great question. The, the fault, of course, nobody knows exactly where it lies, but it is probably within a block either direction of the Windrush schools. It runs um, between the base of the hills and the, the top of the hills. And so there's a, a question of, I don't know, maybe half a mile that, that nobody's certain of, but everybody worries about. That's the reason we had to take Portal of School down. Right. Now, if, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, I, I have the idea that uh, if you locate uh, a, a charter school anywhere, that you, can, you must accept students from anywhere, right? Is that correct? Um, as far as I understand, yes, that is the case. Uh, usually when a charter founder signals that they are interested in a particular group, they'll, they will specify that in their charter as the Summit Public Schools have done. Okay. Now, how do you settle an oversubscription to uh, a particular charter school? Usually a lottery, and um, although there were some very specific questions asked of the summit founders around their lottery system, I would not say that I at all have a clear understanding of how they proposed to do that. Um, something about multiple lotteries at multiple times leading up to uh, an enrollment that ideally makes sense and is representative of the district. Okay. Thank you. Well, Ms. Oh, Chelsea. Uh, yes, Dr. Delgado. You said the second year, or you said 14, 15, that you thought you there would be 20 students. According to the signature page, if you look closely at it, you'll see that in many cases there are two signatures, but they're from the same address. Um, to, to educate myself about what appeared to be actually very low numbers, I did call a few of those households and asked the question, is this, a, it, are both of these names representing the same student? And people were um, very forthcoming and said, yes, they are. So Mr. and Mrs., in some cases, a different last name, but they were talking about the same single student. Um, also on the signature page, there are two of the same person who I think probably just made a mistake and signed twice. Um, there's also a family of four who appear on the signature page, Mr., Mrs., and the two children who were intending to be enrolled. Thank you. Um, before she leaves, I'd just like to make a comment um, to ask staff to check on when they're reviewing the petition. Uh, Mrs. Rulick is very correct that when we were looking at the ethnic balance um, for Clayton Valley, we didn't just look at the school district, we looked at the whole area. So it could make a difference. I would like to know if the seven cities, what the ethnic breakdown is, for the seven cities, we have seven cities, El Cerrito, Kensington, Richmond, San Pablo, El Sprante, Hercules, and Fanol. Um, number two is, I have the same question looking at the um, signatures living in El Cerrito. I kind of know the addresses, and so um, I only saw two addresses in Richmond, and they were on the hillside. Uh, community. So I think staff needs to clarify that for the board also. And then I have other questions, but I'll hold mine until after I hear from the public. Are we then done questions for Dr. Delgado? Thank you, Dr. Delgado. And again, I apologize for having to run out. Um, it's it's uh, necessary this evening. Thank you. Okay.